Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Um, we're going to talk today about something that's really hard to accept, but um, there are scriptures in the Bible that if you were to believe in Christ, you would have to throw out some of these scriptures. Okay, and that's where the problem lies, where my entire channel, you can go back and look at my other videos, we talk about how Christianity doesn't really have faith in Christ, and it's because there are other scriptures that are completely opposed to Christ's work. So if you were to listen to those scriptures, you wouldn't be listening to Christ's teachings. Okay, so Christ represents one thing. Principles and ideas of Christ are completely opposite of the principles put forth in Scripture. So, by the end, you are going to have to throw out three quarters of the Scripture if you truly want to understand Jesus's teachings, the principles he stood on, and his finished work. So, But Christianity doesn't do that. And they take the Bible as one. And all these verses are mixed together as one. So they say they have faith in Christ, but they don't. So what we're going to talk about today is the scriptures. If you were to believe in Christ's teachings, what Christ did at the cross, we're going to talk about the scriptures that you have to throw away. Now, the Bible says you can throw them away. The Bible itself says that you don't have to listen to these scriptures. And I will show you where that is in scripture, okay? So, first, Christianity, there are two and a half billion people that believe in Christ, okay? All of them say, yes, I have faith in Christ, Okay, if you believe that, you are not, first of all, believing Jesus, who said straight is the way and narrow is the gate. Straight is the way and narrow is the gate. So now, please look out at the, however many Christians you know, and know that when they say they have faith in Christ, Jesus said, the opposite. Few there be that find it. Do you believe Jesus? Then you better be suspicious of 90% of the people who say, yeah, I believe in Jesus. I have faith in Jesus. You better be suspicious because you better believe Christ. Okay, so let's get started. If you are actually to believe in Christ, you have to believe these scriptures right here. Hebrews 2.14. I'm going to get rid of this here. And 1 John 3.8. Okay? For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he, Jesus, also himself likewise took part in the same. Jesus became a human being. That through Jesus' death, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. The reason that Jesus came into the flesh body was to destroy the devil. And 1 John 3, 8. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to be manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Could So if you can think in your mind of a world that had no devil, of a world that had no sin, because the works of the devil is all this evil and all this sin that we see everywhere. So can you please, in your mind, picture a world where there is no devil and there is no sin? Okay. That is the world you live in today, but you don't believe it. And it's because you have to change your thinking. 
Okay. Right now you can't do that. Um, but please believe in Jesus. So conceive for a moment that Jesus accomplished his purpose at the cross, which was to destroy the devil. And it was to destroy the works of the devil. Believe for a minute that that were true, that Jesus did not fail, that he actually defeated the devil. The devil is gone. He doesn't exist in this world. There is no evil. There is no sin. Believe, believe that for a moment because that's what your Bible says Jesus did at the cross. This was the purpose he came into the flesh. Okay? If you believed that, you have to throw out these scriptures. Resist the devil and he will flee? No, I'm not going to resist the devil. He doesn't have to flee because Jesus overcame the enemy. He defeated the devil. The devil's destroyed. Jesus overcame the enemy. He defeated the enemy. You also can't believe this one. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. No, he's not. Have no fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Don't fear this. Jesus already destroyed the devil at the cross. Imagine. Imagine. Because once you understand Jesus' teachings, your mind is going to be renewed and you're going to understand how he actually did not fail. He actually accomplished his mission here on earth. He actually destroyed the devil and sin. There is no sin in the world. There is no devil roaming about. If you believe in Jesus, that's what you have to believe. You cannot believe. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What do you mean? My Savior already defeated the devil. Why on God's earth would I put on my armor to fight anybody? Especially when Jesus taught me, love your enemies. Don't fight them. See, we don't believe in Jesus. We believe all of these so much more. We believe all of these scriptures here so much more than we believe in Jesus' finished work, that he accomplished his purpose. So if you want to believe in Jesus, you have to throw away these other scriptures. Do you understand how you can't do both? The scripture over here, it don't have faith in it. Instead, have faith in the scripture over here. Jesus, your Savior, accomplished his mission. Imagine that you could believe that for one moment, please. Okay. Then you have to get rid of the other scriptures. And like I said, you can throw out these other scriptures. Scripture tells you you can. And I'll show you where it says that. It's one or the other. Either the devil's roaming about and can flee from you, or he's defeated, gone, obliterated, done. Does not exist. Enemy overcome. Okay. Then we have the idea that Jesus taught us to follow the commands, follow the law, um, keep, don't bear false witness against your neighbor, honor your mother and father, um, do not steal, don't commit adultery. Jesus would stand on these principles. That's what we believe. Okay, in truth, Jesus taught something totally different. He taught something totally different. He didn't want you to follow the law. He didn't want you to follow the old covenant at all. And the old covenant included the Ten Commandments. There is something else that Christianity doesn't know. The difference between the old and the new covenant. They, your pastors and preachers and priests don't know the difference. Because the Old Covenant set up a system of government, of law, religious law, and political. It set up a way of life for the Israelites, the Hebrews, the Jews, okay? And what that included, 
If you wanted to keep the law of Jehovah, the 613 commandments as given through Moses, you had to serve God. Um, it was a very, there was a very detailed plan designed by Moses about the service at the tabernacle at the temple. So he, God wanted the people to come and congregate at the tabernacle and temple to learn about God's ways. That was the service. Okay? That the law outlined that. The old covenant outlined that law. Christianity still has church and they still have service. But better yet, every single person who wanted to be in God's graces had to be a faithful servant. So not only is the congregation gathering to serve at the service, the individuals serve God. You must be a faithful servant. Okay? So that's the same principles are practiced in the Old Covenant and in the New. Christianity practices the same thing. The Old Covenant, the Old Law, the Old Testament, it said, sacrifice your animals to me. Right? Bring me one of your livestock. This is a huge sacrifice for you because this livestock is your livelihood, okay? And give it to me. Well, Christianity doesn't bring their cow to the altar. The New Testament says they are the living sacrifice. Same principle as the Old Covenant. Christianity is still practicing that principle. How do you sacrifice for God? Well, you give your time to be charitable and go out and um, volunteer. You donate, give up, sacrifice your money. Tithing, giving charity. You are obedient to the best of your ability. You don't participate in the sins of the world. You sanctify yourself. That's a sacrifice. You are abstaining from certain practices in the world. To abstain means to give up, and to give up means to sacrifice. We still have the same religion going on. Christianity is still practicing the old law, the Old Testament covenant. In principle, it's the same religion as set up by Moses. They had to study their law on the Sabbath day. In fact, they couldn't even speak their own words on the Sabbath day. Christianity memorizes their verses backwards and forwards and studies the law because this is where God's ways are found. Okay? It's obedience. It's sanctification. It's works, right? Faith without works is dead. Well, the people of the Old Testament did the exact same thing in principle. Exactly the same. So we think that Jesus would have us abide by service, Sacrifice, tithing, obedience, sanctification, studying the word to show yourself approved. We think that Jesus would condone these things and say, yeah, be a good and faithful servant, right? In John 10, 17, or Mark 10, 17, right here, a man came to Jesus and said, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? But Jesus says, well, you know the commands. Don't commit adultery. Don't kill, don't steal, don't bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy mother and father. And the man says, oh, good, because I have done every single one of these since I was little. Every single one of these laws. I've sacrificed, I've tithed, I've served, I've obeyed the commandments, I've done it all. Jesus said to him, you still lack this is not good enough. It's not good enough. Jesus said, sell what you have. He's not talking about your belongings. He could give a crap about your belongings. Sell your principles, your ideas. Give it all away and renew your thinking. Take up your cross. Go through hell. Jesus is saying, go through hell right here and follow me. Okay, but wait a minute. So he's saying, don't follow the law? He's saying, it's not good enough. Why would you do it? You still lack. Why would you do that? Instead, give it all up and follow me. 
But Psalm 19 says the law of the Lord is perfect. Of course we would keep it then because we want to be perfect too. Well, is it perfect? Is that law, the old covenant, the old religion, everything about it that we still practice today in Christianity, is it perfect? Is it good? Then why did Christ end the law? For Christ is the end of the law. If that first covenant was faultless, what do you mean? It just said the Lord, the law of the Lord is perfect. And now it says, if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second? Which one is true? Was the law perfect or was it faulty? You have to get rid of one of them. Jesus is saying, get rid of the idea that the law is perfect because you cannot be justified by the works of the law. Okay, so Christ ended the law. Why? Because the law works wrath. Okay, which one is it? Do you follow the commands? Or do you not? Was it perfect? Then why did Christ end it and bring us a new covenant? You have to believe one or the other. So you either practice the religion and follow the Ten Commandments, or you don't at all. Okay, but God in Deuteronomy 30, God said in Deuteronomy 30, I command you this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes. Because he had 613 statutes, ordinance, commands, conditions to follow, standards to uphold, and his judgments that you may live. This is how you gain eternal life. Multiply, be blessed, be abundant. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land where you go to possess it, the promised land. God said, if you keep my ways, follow my commandments, follow my statutes and all of my judgments, you will earn your lot in the promised land. You'll get into heaven. It will give you life eternal and you will be blessed and abundant. Okay? But Romans 7, 9 says the exact opposite. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandments came, sin revived and I died. It caused you death. Wait a minute. God said you would live. Which one are you going to throw out? Which one are you going to throw out? The commandments kill or the commandments give you life. Which one are you going to throw out? Jesus said, I am the end of the law. I come to fulfill it so you no longer have to do it. The commandment, which was ordained to life. See, God promised life. But I found it to be unto death. Well, you would. You would if you did it correctly. Because all you can do is serve, strive, toil, labor, sacrifice, obey. The law was bondage. You couldn't do anything but serve like a servant or a slave. It put you in prison because you couldn't go and do that thing because it was unclean. You had to say, stay sanctified, set apart, holy. So you can't go out and do that. You can't go out and do this. You can't do anything. And that is death. To live is to be free which is why Jesus, Jesus was the life, the truth, and the truth sets you free. So somebody's lying here. Somebody is lying. I'm telling you, you have to throw this out and listen to Jesus. We'll, we'll get to more of his teachings. Here we go. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, commandment deceived me? 
and by it slew me, killed me. The commandments kill because they reveal, reveal sin. Once you are guilty of sin, you're guilty. And for as many as are of the works of the law are under a curse. Wait a minute. God just said that you would be blessed and multiply if you followed it. Well, not Galatians 3.10 here. Many of us as are of the works of the law are under the curse. You have to choose which one you're going to throw away. Do you want to stay under law? Then you have no faith in Christ. Because what did Christ do? Christ is the end of the law, but only to everyone that believes in him. If you're still performing your religion, your obedience, your sacrifice, your service, your tithing, your sanctification by works, you don't believe in Christ. So you are still under law? Well, of course, because the end of the law is only for those who believe in Christ. But you still believe in the devil too. So you don't really believe in Christ. Okay. Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Has he redeemed you from the law? Or do you still practice your religion? Are you still obedient? Are you still a faithful servant? Are you still sacrificing? Wait a minute. This means you have no faith in Christ because Christ was the perfect servant. What the hell can you do better than him? You must not believe that he was the perfect servant because you are still serving, trying to earn your way. Christ was the perfect sacrifice, but you don't believe that because you are still sacrificing, abstaining from certain sin, setting yourself apart from the world. That's your sacrifice. What? Why? Jesus was perfect in his sacrifice. What can you do better? You don't believe that Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. You don't believe it. That's why you still do it. That's why you're still doing your religion. You don't believe he covered you. Jesus paid the price. Why are you still giving charity in God's name? Why are you still tithing? Why are you doing these things? He paid the price. You don't believe that. You don't believe in Jesus. And it's because your scripture has you mixed and confused. The meaning of the word Bible is confusion. Confused speech. That's literally the meaning. Okay? It's got you confused. It says one thing. It says Jesus did another. You say you have faith in Christ, but you're doing the things opposed to Christ. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. You can't be justified. By doing the law, why are you doing it? Instead, you have to have faith in Christ. That's how you're justified. If you're doing the law, you do not have faith in Christ. Christ ended the law. You don't believe that. So we're going to go see where it says Christ, what Christ did to the law, okay? Right here. Christ blotted out, deleted, hit delete on your computer, the handwritten ordinances. All the laws, statutes, and commandments. Why? Because they were against us and they were contrary to us. And he took the law out of the way, nailing it to his cross. He crucified the law. He deleted the law. He triumphed over the principles upon which the law stood. The law stood on the principle. If you perform this religion, if you serve me, sacrifice for me, obey my laws, tithe, sanctify, 
keep yourself clean, keep yourself holy, you will be my elect and chosen. Really? Because Jesus hung out with the sinners. The most unclean of all. Do you believe Jesus? Or do you believe the scripture? You cannot believe these scriptures if you believe in Jesus. You have to believe these. Jesus' work. This is what Jesus did. You can't believe the other ones. You have to throw them out. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, those handwritten ordinances, get rid of them. The spirit of the living God is you, the written epistle of Christ, Christ in the flesh. Not in the tables of stone, not in the Ten Commandments, but in the heart. And what does Jesus say the heart says? The heart says, do unto others as you would have done unto you. Love. Love everybody. If you do that, you cannot do any harm to anybody. Why would you need the commandments then? If you can't harm anybody because you're so in love with them, why would you need the commandments? And until you find that love, you don't know what that feels like. And so you will continue to harm. And you can't have that love until you find Christ. Who has made us ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter. What do you mean? The letter of the Bible. Every jot and every tittle of the letter has to go. Goodbye. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. What does the Spirit say? Love. The letter kills For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandments came, sin revived and I died. And here it is again. The commandments kill you. The letter of the law kills you. This is why if you want Jesus, who is the life, you have to get rid of the scripture. This is where it tells you it's okay. Get rid of it. God speaks right here. Heart and conscience, the Bible teaches in Romans 2. And John 8, this is where God speaks, not in the book. The book is mixed. Black and white, good and evil. Okay, Rev 19. Well, in Rev 19, we have a beautiful picture. We think... After these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation, glory, honor, and the power of God unto the Lord our God. Okay. For true and righteous are his judgments. Hmm. For he has judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Really? Verse 11, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and right in righteousness does he judge and make war. This is a prophecy of the coming Messiah in Revelation 19. Boy, he's angry. He's vengeful. He makes war. He avenges his servants. His eyes were as a flame of fire. On his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. He was clothed with a vegetable dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in clean, fine, white linen, all clean and shiny. Oh, I thought Jesus' entourage were prostitutes, tax collectors, Sumerians, and the lowest population of the low. So which one do you believe? Well, I'll tell you which one to believe. Is Jesus coming as this mighty warrior? Okay, this is still Revelation 19. 
make war against them, his army, on and on. Matthew 5, 39, where Jesus speaks. But I say unto you, resist not evil? Wait a minute. We just read a scripture that said, resist the devil and he will flee. Jesus says, resist not evil. Do you see what I'm saying? If you want to believe in Jesus, you have to throw out three quarters of the scripture because the letter kills you. And if you want Jesus, he's life. You can't believe the letter. You have to believe Jesus. Resist not evil. Whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Wait a minute, Jesus. You're going to come and you're going to avenge the blood of your servants. You're going to make war against them and mete out the wrath of God. So why are you teaching to be peaceful here, Jesus? Because the scripture says, no, you're an angry warrior. But you say, if somebody hits you, turn the other cheek so they can hit you again? What about the Prince of Peace, Isaiah? The Prince of Peace. I didn't get it for you. Was Jesus actually the Prince of Peace? Or is he a warrior? Which one is it? Because let me tell you, truly, if you are a peaceful person, you will never, ever make war. And how do I know that? Because that's me. I am for peace only and forever. Never, ever, ever. Should, another, should a weapon be raised against another human being for any reason, even if a murderer came into my house, what do you do? You die as a martyr. You die as a martyr. Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. So, Prince of Peace. I just had it, and I erased it. Okay, so Isaiah calls him right here. For unto us a child is born, a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace does not make war. And how do we know this? Because Jesus said, Love your enemies. I have heard it said before, You shall love your neighbor, but hate your enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which use you. Jesus is going to swallow this all down. He's going to say, no, I was wrong. Let's go kill them instead. Is that who you think Jesus is? You're wrong. His words prove it. Love your enemy, turn the other cheek. Prince of peace. There will never be a warrior coming. Never, never. And those, you can watch my other teachings if you don't understand how that is. Okay? Okay. Um, so, what else do we have? Well, we have the idea that in the book of Revelation, Jesus is going to come and bring the kingdom of God down to earth. In the future, Jesus' kingdom is coming in the future. I'm telling you right now, throw out that scripture. Because what did Jesus say? Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus taught that the kingdom's already here. But you can't see that. You see the devil out there. You see evil out there. But the pure of heart see God everywhere. The peaceful ones see God everywhere. Okay? And again, we don't have time to get into those teachings. We will, though, on this channel. Okay? So you can understand how, how I know that the devil's defeated, how everybody's a beautiful, shining light of Christ out there. Every single person. Not just the Christians, not just the baptized, not just the born again. I'll show you that today. Okay? If I remember. Okay. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent. 
the kingdom is at hand. What does repent mean? Change your thinking, you law-abiding citizens. You followers of Moses, change your thinking. You who perform the servitude, the sacrifice, the obedience, the sanctification, the separation, the judgment, change your thinking. For the because I come to triumph over the principles on which your law stands. Colossians 2.15, I just read it for you. The kingdom is already at hand. Listen to this. And as ye go, he told his apostles, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is now. Christians don't see the kingdom of heaven. They think it's coming in the future. Mark 1, and saying, The time is freaking fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Change your mind about your religion, your law, your covenant that you made that put you in bondage. Legal binding is what legal means. Legislation means. It means legal bondage. Prison is what Jesus called it and Isaiah called it. And believe in Jesus. No, no, no. We must keep our religion. This is how we are holy. No, you're holy by faith in Christ, which you don't have. Luke 17. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God comes not with observation. For neither say, look over here, look over there. Because the kingdom of God is within you. This is how you find it. This is how the kingdom comes. You have to understand Jesus' teachings, and right now you don't. And so what kingdom do you live in? You live in the kingdom where the devil roams about, seeking whom he can devour. Where everybody who's outside of your religion is evil, filled with sin, doing works of the devil. Where are you? You're in hell. You're in hell. You're in hell. And I'll show you where the Bible says this. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Where did Jesus go in his death? Into the grave. What's the word grave? Into the sepulcher. What's the word grave in Hebrew? Sheol. He went into Sheol. Therefore, we are buried six feet under in hell. That's why you see the devil roaming about everywhere you look. You are buried six feet under. Buried with him by baptism into death. Who rules over you in death? The God of the dead. Who's the God of the dead? Satan. What's the law? The law of sin and death. The commandments kill you. The commandments kill you. And he said unto the disciples, the day will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. It's not coming in the future. It's already here in the heart. It's already here. The kingdom is at hand. It's when you can forgive everybody out there, when you change your principles that you stand on. God doesn't judge. How can he? Jesus ended the law. He deleted the law. What's the office of God? If God does not judge, because he can't, because Jesus was the end of the law, Jesus fulfilled the law, made it irrelevant, why do you judge? Why are you calling other people evil? Why are you judging sin? For where the no law is, there is no transgression. You don't believe in Jesus, that he got rid of the law. Romans 4.15, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Jesus became a curse for us. He took on the sin of the world, and he went up to the cross and killed it. Then Jesus makes everything new. If you can believe in him. Okay? Okay. Um... You can't believe any of the book of Revelation. Why? 
because Jesus fulfilled the entire law. What's a law to you, Christians? Is the law that talks about in the New Testament that says, do not have relation with unclean people. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers, says scripture. Do you believe that? Then that's a New Testament law. Do you believe that, um, yeah, at the book of Revelation, the devil gets thrown into the lake of fire? Well, then that's a law to you. You believe it. You stand upon it. You wait for it to happen as if it is true. It, that's the definition of law. But Jesus fulfilled the law every jot and every tittle through the book of Revelation. The apocalypse is all the fire and brimstone because you have to realize that the God you're following is not the truth and that you're not believing in Jesus and that hurts and it burns and it shakes your earth like an earthquake. And you say, what the hell have I been thinking all of these years in the Christian religion? I have not had faith in Christ. What? It's devastating. And that's the revelation. That's the, oh my God, (laughs) of the book of Revelation. Okay? Jesus said, I come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Why didn't he destroy it, you guys? Why didn't he destroy the law, though he ended it? Because you still follow it. That's exactly why. Even though he fulfilled every obligation of it, you don't need to serve. He was the perfect servant. You don't believe that, so you still serve. And on and on. He was the perfect obedience. You think you can do it, but you can't. That's why you needed him. You need to believe in him. Okay, Matt 5, 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Jesus said, I come to fulfill. Did I not get the verse for you? I come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy. But Jesus said he came to fulfill another one of his purposes here on earth, to fulfill the law. So was the law, be, was the law fulfilled? At the cross when he died, it was all fulfilled. If you believe his words that he said he came to fulfill. Th- that means that all the jots and tittles have passed all of them, and that heaven and earth have passed away? Absolutely. Why? Because the kingdom is at hand. Earth is no longer a hellish place. The devil's destroyed. The evil's destroyed. The people are not wicked sinners. You're suddenly, you step into heaven. The kingdom is here now. It's new. It's a new world. The heavens have passed. How? Well, God used to sit in the throne until Jesus took away his law. Then God fell off the throne. And there is no one to judge. All are innocent. All are innocent by Jesus, the Lamb, who was slain from the foundation of the world, covering all sin of all people. It's easier for heaven and earth to pass away than one tittle of the law to fail. Yep. And Jesus made everything new. New heaven, new earth, all passed away because he said, I come to fulfill. If he accomplished what he said he was going to, it's all fulfilled. I will write upon him a new name. Even his name is new because the God of the Old Testament is not God. (laughs) Even the name is new. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, even prophesied in Jeremiah. You can keep this one. Hebrews 8, a new covenant he has made the first old. 
That which decays, waxes old, is ready to vanish away if Christianity would let go of it. But they won't. And so they still perform the old covenant. Hebrews 9. He appeared once at the end of the world to put away sin. Nobody believes this, but this is one that you keep. He appeared once at the end of the world. Why? Because when he died at the cross, the world was made new. Fulfilling that law, God the judge fell off the throne. He fulfilled the law. He ended the law. He blotted out the handwriting of ordinances. And now it's a new world. No more governing, judgmental God. Who is actually not God at all. Because God can't fall off his throne. Jesus' father was totally different. And that's for another teaching too. He, to put away sin. No, no, says Christianity. There's tons of wicked sinners out there. The devil roams about. No. Did Jesus put away sin or not? By the sacrifice of himself. You either believe it or you don't. You believe the other scriptures. Please have faith in Christ. Please, I ask you. He appeared once at the end of the world to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. No, no, Christianity does not believe John the Baptist. Jesus did not take away the sin of the world. Everybody's still sinful, according to Christianity. They're wrong. They're confused. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but the sins of the whole world. Nope. Nope. Jesus didn't do it. He wasn't good enough. He didn't fulfill his mission. He didn't accomplish what he was sent to do. No, says Christianity. Because they still believe that the whole world is sinful. Okay, we'll keep drilling it in, and then maybe you need some hope. Like, okay, how do I get to this point? I understand that I am talking out of both sides of my mouth, that I say one thing, but I actually don't believe in Jesus. I say I do, but I, I see that I don't believe in his work. I still believe in the devil. I still believe that he's going to come as a warrior when he was the Prince of Peace and taught peace and love only. Now he's going to swallow that all down and come with a sword. It's ridiculous. Uh, someone who's a pacifist never goes to war. Okay. Okay. That's it for this video. Enough. We, I think we actually have more in here. Maybe not. Okay. That's it. So I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.